I'm I'm kind of uh, doing a lot of research lately into the increased use of drones in military action, particularly by the U.S. And I think a really interesting thing to discuss, Lewis, would be the psychological component of being so removed physically from the the war zones themselves. And I've read I've read quite a bit about this. I've I've seen quite quite a few documentaries about this, and there it, it is discussed sometimes, but not not in the depth that it should be. The question of what is the effect of bombing some place in Afghanistan by controlling a drone sitting in Texas in the United States and then simply going home to your wife and kids right afterwards, for example. And I think that there is a significant effect. I think that it really devalues the life of those that you are bombing because you are so removed from it. You're, it, almost, it almost, you're almost playing a video game. It almost becomes like a video game. Mm -hmm. that, that was exactly my thought, actually. And I, I am aware, and I know I'll get emails about this, I am aware that the, the military does have very specific psychological training and observation programs for people that are running these drone attacks because they, they realize some of the risks of this. But I think a, a better question to be asking is not, is the mili military training these people in the right way, but is this really a direction that we want to be going in as a society? I mean, if everybody just started doing this, what are we going to do? Build underground tunnels where we are not subject to random drone strikes from tiny planes you can't even see in the sky? What direction, and we talk about is society evolving or devolving as a whole, what direction is it going to take us in if this becomes the new kind of de facto warfare? Uh, I mean, if you look at it from the military's point of view, put yourself in their shoes. This technology is absolutely crucial, right? Yeah. I mean, in a lot of cases, these things are flying around mountainous regions where... The government would it, say so. It's almost impossible to, to navigate on foot. So uh, I can understand why, why it exists. At the same time... We live in a world where, with the push of a few buttons, we can send uh, nukes to every major capital city in Europe in sure. seconds. Right. So, I mean, how is this? How is this really distorting things or skewing things? Because this, I think, sending a nuke has a very specific implication to everybody involved psychologically. That's very, very clear. You know the significance of it because of history, But if a drone blows up a building uh, or a in cave Pakistan, in the mountains in, in Pakistan, Afghanistan... It's very easy to be completely disconnected from that. And you know what we're seeing? NPR actually uh, did a story on this, which some said was, was basically just very promotional, uh, that these drones are actually going to start becoming part of everyday domestic life, patrolling the border, for example, um, even private corporations now considering how to use these. So I'm very concerned about this. If we're talking about Big Brother in 1984, if we're talking about warrantless surveillance, if we're talking about the Patriot Act and security, this has to be a conversation that's taken more seriously than it is, I believe. Right, but, uh, I mean, would you throw a bigger fit over drones flying around overhead with cameras than cameras just on uh, the corner of buildings downtown? Well, we, th that already exists. I know, exactly. Why? Wh which one would I throw a bigger fit about? I don't know. I mean, I, I, think, I think this is a bigger deal because the cameras, presumably, you can see. And a lot of these drones, you can't, from the ground, you can't tell that they're even overhead. Good point. All right. You've got nothing else on that? Uh, not really. I mean, I, I don't really care about the surveillance, uh, to be honest. I don't think it's at a level where we need to be concerned yet. So you subscribe to the idea of if you're not doing anything wrong, why do you care about being watched? To an extent. All right. I well, mean, I completely disagree. To an extent. That it's not at a level where we need to be concerned. I mean, look at look at warrantless wiretaps. No, that's different. At, that's I'm not talking about that. That's surveillance. That's part of surveillance. I'm, I'm part talking, of the I'm, surveillance no, no, no. I'm culture. Talking, I'm talking strictly like video surveillance in public places. You don't that you don't care about. Not too much. Yeah, I'm a, totally against the, the wiretapping. So one to ten, ten being you're really concerned. One is you're not concerned. How much do you care about cameras in public? Ten being not concerned at all. No, ten being super concerned. Oh, okay. I, I'm at like a two. You're at a two on cameras in public. And what are you on with warrantless wiretaps? Ten. And then what about drones uh, being used for surveillance? Like five. And then how about TSA pat-downs? Uh, two. Yeah, you, I think, honestly, I'm starting to think Lewis not only is not concerned about TSA pat-downs, he's kind of into the idea of it. I think he, the, uh, you, I'm you, really not, no. 
we've we've discussed this at length. <laughs> we we need to go to break anyway. All right, well, let's take a break. I'm going to try to get video of of a pat down when I fly <laughs> in a few days and and bring that back to you and report back. Stitcher.com slash David Pakman show. Get the show on the go. Back after this. The David Pakman Show at davidpakman.com. <laughs> 